Hey everyone, it's Rachel from Desert Blossom Crafts here, back with a new crochet pattern. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to crochet the Serendi pillow. This pillow is really easy, it's just made in one piece in the round with minimal sewing. And I'm going to be showing you how to do everything step by step today. So let's get right into the materials. So I used Bernay Velvet to make this pillow. It's a super soft yarn. Obviously, if you don't use velvet, you're going to get a very different result, so I do recommend choosing a velvet yarn. This is a chunky velvet. And then you're going to need an H crochet hook. Now, you can totally change this up. The pillow is completely size adjustable, and all of those tips are covered in the written pattern, so you can change up the hook size and the yarn if you'd like. Just keep in mind you will get a different look completely if you don't use velvet. One last thing you're going to need for this pattern is a pillow form, of course. So I used a 12 by 11 inch pillow form, which I know is a bit of an obscure size. So the nice thing about this pattern is you can adjust it to fit any pillow form. It's a really simple repeat of stitches, so you don't need to worry about a lot in adjusting, but all the notes on adjusting and everything is in the written pattern, like I mentioned before. So you can easily make this a 12 by 12 inch or whatever size pillow form you have. Now, as for the written pattern, it is free on my blog. You can get the link to that in the description box below. Or there's also a paid PDF in my shop. All those links will be down there for you to check out. So, without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So, I have made here 54 foundation single crochets. This is a technique I really like to use because you make the chain and single crochet at the exact same time and it's nice and stretchy. If you're unfamiliar with it, I'll put a video in the cards that you can check out. Now, once you make your foundation single crochet, we're going to join this into a circle. So I'm just going to take the hook. It was, this is the right side, right? We want to turn it so the wrong side is here. And we just want to be careful not to twist it as we bring it around. And then we're going to join this with a slip stitch to form a round. So just grabbing the working yarn, make sure you don't get the tail on this end. And yarn over and slip stitch that together. So round one is going to be super simple. We are just going to single crochet in each stitch around. Now, for velvet yarn, it can be a little bit tricky to find the stitches, but these are the tops of the stitches here. You can still kind of see them, the, each little V, and you can crochet by feel as well. So I would kind of put my fingers there and kind of hold the bottom of that stitch and then slide them over to find the top of the next stitch. I do have a video on working with like fur type yarns, which is a little different than velvet, but you still can't see your stitch as well, so I will put a video there for you to check out on that. Now this first round, we're just single crocheting around. You might have noticed we didn't start with a chain. That is because this is going to be worked in continuous rounds, so we're gonna place a stitch marker here at the when we get to the end. So don't worry about chaining at the beginning. Just continue making your single crochets. Go a little slower on this one so you can see me going in the velvet yarn. And just keep repeating this around. And I'll meet you back when I get to the end. Alrighty, and I have come to the end, so make sure your work is turned so that the tail is down right here. And it'll look a little bit uneven, but we'll fix that at the end. We can sew this up. So I just have one more stitch to do, and it's this one right here. So once that is done, I'm going to grab my stitch marker and put it in the top of this. So now we should be ready to start round. So now we should be ready to start our next round. This is where we begin the waistcoat stitch, which is a stitch that looks a lot like knitting, as you probably saw from the pattern. So instead of working in the tops of the stitch, we are going to work 
in the center of the stitches. Now, I know this is tricky with velvet yarn, but you will get used to it and you'll be able to feel it. So here's the top of the stitch. We're not gonna go there. Instead, we're gonna look for the two vertical bars. So here is one of them and here is the other. And we're gonna insert our hook right between them and make a regular single crochet. So here's our next one. This is, and you do wanna crochet a little bit more loosely because if you crochet too tightly, you won't be able to see these. So these ones, that first one was a little tight. It was a little hard to see, but these ones are looser. So again, here's the center. And there's my single crochet. So if we look really, really close, Here's one vertical bar, and here's the other one. So here and here, so we wanna go right in between. And pull through. And that is basically what we're gonna be doing for the rest of the pillow. And you will get more used to it. Like I said, crochet loosely. So when you pull up this loop right here, this is gonna form those vertical bars for the next round. So you don't wanna cinch it all tight. You wanna kinda of let it stay a bit loose. I'll show you that again. So we insert, we pull up, and we wanna just let that come up a little bit higher than normal to keep it loose. Now, whatever tension you're doing and how you're pulling it up, just make sure you stay consistent with it. And continue, let's look at how this looks now. So you can't totally see the waistcoat stitch yet, but as we continue to go around, you will see it forming more and more. So one last time, first vertical bar, let me come from the top actually, first vertical bar, second vertical bar, center. Insert and make my single crochet. So repeat this all the way around once again. So I've been going all the way around and when I get to my stitch marker, this is gonna be the last stitch we make, but we need to take it out before we make it because we're gonna go in those vertical, in the center of the stitch. So insert between, make that last stitch. And now I'm just gonna grab my stitch marker again and insert it. So this is basically the entire pillow. To continue, I would just find my next stitch and continue in the waistcoat stitch. I'm just gonna do a few stitches here so you can hopefully see what the pattern looks like. Okay, so it's starting to form a little bit more where you can see those V's forming. But yeah, I would just go around this again. Don't join, just work in the center of this stitch and then move up the stitch marker. And you're gonna keep doing this until it fits your pillow form. I will have more info on that when we get to that portion of the pattern. But this is also a good time where you want to try this over your pillow form and make sure it's fitting well. That's what I love about this method for making a pillow is you can try it on as you go, unlike ones where you make two squares and sew it together. That's a bit harder to do. So you want to put it over your pillow form and make sure it's fitting well and not too snugly. If it is too snug, you'll have to kind of pinch the corners and stuff it in and it won't look perfect to the form. So just make sure it's fitting well and it's not pinching it in any way. And keep in mind that sometimes pillow forms, the corners come out a little bit more than the center. So it can be a little bit looser in the center. Anyway, I did 49 rounds of this. That was the perfect size for my pillow form, but you may need to adjust that and we'll address that in just a second. All right, so I've continued just crocheting in the round over and over again and you can see i'm getting close to being done here 
So the way you know you're done is when you actually have some overlap. So like here, this end is ready to be sewn up and we're gonna do that in a minute where we just sew it right on up. This I do need to do a few more rounds on. So you can see here's my stitch marker. I probably have, well, I'd say about five more rounds to do before I can sew up the other end. But for now, let me show you how we're gonna do this end. It's super simple. I didn't quite leave a long enough end on mine. So make sure you do leave a long tail. I may have to join another one in halfway through, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll show you here. You can use really any seam that you'd like. So I'm just gonna join the two ends together. And for me, whip stitch is fine. So I'm just gonna make my seam go over, go in my next two stitches, and I'm just whip stitching it over each one. You can also use like an invisible join. You can even crochet them together if you prefer to not sew. Really anything works just as long as you like the finished look of it. You can see here it's starting to come together. And I'm just continuing this all the way across. And you'll just keep kind of pinching it together as you go. And that will give you a nice corner. And once we finish this, of course, we can kind of push it down into the corner a little bit more. Right now it's not quite down in there far enough. But that's how you're gonna sew it together. And once you get done with your five rows here and you have enough overlap, you can do the same exact thing on the other side. All right, so I've done another six rows, I believe. And now my pillow is ready to sew together. I have it the right size. Now the only thing left to do is plan out any embellishments you want to do. So there are two ways to do this. You can see the set has changed here because I have sewn up the other side of my pillow. And that is the first method. You can sew up your pillow and do your embellishments afterward. Now the upside to this is you can see and plan out the exact pattern that you're gonna do, which is what I am doing here. But the downside is it can be a little bit harder to sew. And since I'm gonna be doing duplicate stitches, which I'll get into in a minute, it can be a little bit easier when you have the open side so you can pull the needle out and reach your hand in if you need to and things like that. So there's an upside and downside to this. I feel confident with the duplicate stitch enough that I sewed up the pillow, but it's up to you. You can plan it out. You can put the pillow inside, plan out what you're going to do, and then take it out and do your embellishments without the pillow form inside. It's totally up to you. Now either way though, you do want to plan what your embellishment is going to be. A duplicate stitch is where we work over these stitches with a different color to create a kind of cheater's color work. So these strands of yarn here are just to show the duplicate stitches I'm going to do. I'm going to work them the length of these yarns in this color. So this is one way you can plan it out. You can use your contrasting yarn and just kind of lay it in the places that you're thinking so that you can plan out where it's all going to go. I also use these yarn needles here to kind of mark the edge of where I want it to go so it's nice and centered. Now, of course, you have to be careful because it can slide off very easily doing it this way. But you get the idea. If you are more of a artist, you can definitely draw out the size of your pillow and plan out what you want to do. The thing you want to keep in mind, because we used the waistcoat stitch for this pillow, the stitches do slant slightly. So you can see I've planned a design that looks really nice slanted like this. But you can decide which way you want the pillow. You can have it um, horizontally, and then you'll have some slanted lines like this, or you can do it vertically like this, and then you can do straight lines across the stitches. So it it's really a whole creative thing that you can go a ton of different ways with. So feel free to get creative in planning out your duplicate stitches, or you can just follow exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm gonna start with this center strand right here for my duplicate stitches. And whatever you do, whatever you're doing for your design, you're gonna want to start by inserting your hook in the center of the stitch below the stitch you want to duplicate. So I'm gonna duplicate this one right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook in the center just like this and pull it up. 
and then I'm just going to leave about six to eight inches on the end to weave in later. All right, now I'm going to lift this guy up and because I'm going to be working duplicate stitches all across here. So to do your first duplicate stitch, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So this is the stitch I want to duplicate right here. So I am going to insert my hook around the next stitch above it. All right. So always go above the stitch. Pull the yarn all the way through. And by the way, this should be a very long strand, so you don't have to use too many strands. And then that's created the first half of our stitch right there. Now we're going to come down back to the same exact spot where we inserted our hook. We're going to insert there. And we're going to bring our hook up in the middle of the same stitch we're duplicating. So right here at the base of the next stitch. Then I'm just going to pull this all the way through. And there we have our first duplicated stitch and our yarn is in the correct place to duplicate the next stitch. So let's do that again. I'm gonna move this a little bit. And once again, we want to insert our hook in the stitch above the one we're duplicating. So we're duplicating this one right here. So we want to insert our hook around this stitch. Pull through and just pull gently at first because you don't want to pull them too tight. You can see that side of the stitch has already formed. So now we're going to go down through the middle of this stitch, the previous one, and up in the middle of the current stitch. Pull gently, and there you have it. There's your second stitch. Let's do it one more time. So we're in the center of the current stitch, and we're going to work up into the one above the one we're duplicating. Pull through. And then insert in the top of this one and out the center of the current one. And all the way down. There we go, we have three duplicated stitches. And of course my pattern here got a little bit off these other markers, but I can easily put those on now that I have my first one already started. It's kind of like my template will now just be on there permanently so it'll be easier to tell where to do the next ones. Okay but this is the technique you're going to use to do duplicate stitches however you wish in whatever pattern you wish. Now if you don't want to go this way on the stitches if you want to go this way you would just insert your hook at a different place so instead of you would still go around the, the stitch above but say I wanted to go over to this stitch for my next one then, let me just show you real quick. I would do this first, right? I would still go down through this stitch, but then when you bring your needle up, you can bring it up anywhere you'd like. So I could bring it up here if I want to duplicate the stitch above that. So that's kind of how you can customize the design however you'd like.